What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of my series to making a cooler basement. And on today's episode, I'm going to be covering up some exposed pipes. So since I'm using scrap wood for this project, I only have enough to make a bottom portion and then I'll need to use something different for the top, but I'll get to that later. Right now, I'm just trimming what I have so I can glue up a box for the same height as the chair rail. If you buy the right size wood for this project, you won't need to glue the pieces together like I'm doing here. I'm trying to use up what I have on hand, which are these smaller pieces. Luckily though, once it's glued up and I sand it and stain it, you won't be able to see where I glued them together. So when it comes to clamps, you can never have too many, so put on as many as you have, but I gave that at least an hour to dry. And since these joints won't be bearing any weight, using just glue alone will work just fine. So this is where the box begins to take its shape. You want to lay the front piece face down and then run a line of glue along the edges where the sides will attach. If you don't have a lot of clamps, you can just stack a bit of weight to the top until the glue dries. But once you've given that at least an hour to cure, you can begin removing any clamps or weights and give it a really good sanding with a low grit, maybe around 80 to 100, and then move all the way up to about 200. Now I can begin removing the chair rail that's behind the pipe. Once that's out of the way, I can bring in my box to see what else needs removed. Looks like I'll need to cut away any excess carpet that's still left over so the box can sit nice and flat. This step is optional, but when the pipe was installed, they cut away more carpet than what my enclosure can cover up on the sides, so I'll need to cut away some of it. Next, I'll cut away the bottom trim piece and then remove any of the carpet strips that are still left over. Now that my box is built, I can put on a coat of stain that best matches the trim and paneling. So since I don't have any studs behind the pipe, how I'm attaching it to the wall is a little weird, but it worked for me. I put a little bit of super glue on a piece of scrap wood the same width as the interior of the box and stuck it to the wall, making sure it's level. Once the glue is dry, I'll come back and drive in a few brad nails. Once firmly stuck to the wall, I can then fasten the bottom portion of the enclosure to the piece of scrap wood. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do for this front board is cut out a window so I can easily access this in case there's anything wrong with the system or it needs maintenance or uh, you know the home inspector wants to see it, anything like that. So just a simple window will do. So to cut this out, I'm first going to mark holes that I'll drill out using a bit large enough to accommodate a jigsaw blade which is what I'll be using to cut this out. Don't worry about making a clean cut or one that's really straight because I'll be making a small door with trim on it to cover up any imperfections. After making sure the hole is large enough, I'll begin building the top portion the same way I made the bottom portion, although this time I don't need to use wood because I'll be covering it with paint to match the walls. The 
again, since I'm using scrap material for this, I don't have enough to take this all the way up to the ceiling. So if you're buying material to do something similar, make sure you get enough for the height of your walls. Since this enclosure isn't tall enough, I had to cut a piece to cover the top. Once it's all together though, I gave it a really good sanding and prep for the paint. And luckily enough, they left the bucket of paint in the basement from when they originally painted it. So I had something to match it perfectly instead of having to go match it at the store, which is never actually accurate. But after the first coat was dry, I patched any leftover holes from the brad nailer and then brought it back out so I could line it up on the wall and prep for mounting the brace it will hang on. I did this a little differently this time by transferring the measurements of the box to the wall and then drilling out a place for a wall anchor and then driving in a screw for the brace to hang on. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do this to the bottom because there's nothing behind the paneling, so screws won't hold. I'm also using just one screw in the middle so it can pivot a little bit to allow me to make any adjustments so it aligns with the bottom just right. So once the brace is mounted to the wall and it's nice and sturdy, I can hang up the top portion and then put on a final coat of paint to cover up any imperfections. Next I'll start measuring what I need to cut for the trim to fit. If you've never done trim before, it's pretty easy. Just make sure your minor cuts are as close to 45 degrees as you can get and accuracy is everything. So measure a few times before you make any cuts. To attach it, I'll just use some brad nails and a level to make sure it's straight. Since I didn't have enough trim left over, what I purchased from the store will need stain to match. While that dries, I can start cutting the bottom pieces. Since I wasn't able to make a 45 degree cut, I'll use what's called coping cut by trimming away the shape of the trim with a small saw or a jigsaw. A scroll saw will work as well. Before I test fit the trim, I had to go back and add in a little extra carpet, but otherwise everything looks good, so I'll take this back and stain it to match the other pieces. And while the bottom is drying, I can start adding in the trim on the top portion, making sure I drive in brad nails on the top box and the bottom box just so they get fastened together and it's a little bit more sturdy. Again, I'm making sure everything is level because if anything isn't level, it's not going to align with the other pieces. But everything goes on pretty well after you make the cuts and you always want to test the cuts to make sure everything fits before actually nailing in a piece and then measuring for your next piece. So cut all the pieces before you nail any of the pieces together so that way you make sure everything fits properly and then you can nail them all together. But now I can start working on a little door. So I cut out a piece of scrap wood that fits in there pretty nice. It's not a snug fit, but after I paint it, it'll be a little bit more of a snug fit. But I cut out these little pieces of trim to go around the perimeter and I'm gonna first super glue the edges together just so it has a little bit of something to hold on to. And then once that dries, I can then adhere it to the door, uh, making sure it's level and everything. To do this, I'm putting the door back in its place and then taking my level and aligning it to the trim so make sure it's level. And then once that's in place, I'll pull it out and make sure the glue dries on the door and not the actual enclosure. But once the glue is cured, I'll add in a few brad nails just so it's a little bit more sturdy. So after that's done, I'm going to pull out the nail that I was using as a handle so I can drill out the hole for an actual handle. If you're doing something similar, make sure you center that as best as you can. After that's done, I'm going to come back and patch any imperfections and then once that dries, I'll sand it all down and then give it a coat of paint to match everything else. Again, this was almost a snug fit when it was put in the door and then once I paint the inside of this little door, it'll be a really snug fit to that opening and I won't have to put on any hinges or anything like that. And then once the paint dries, I can put the handle back on. Like it was never there. Alright folks, and there you go. Pretty quick and easy solution for covering some exposed pipes in your basement. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Thanks.